Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of JC3D. It's Monday, March 7th at about 10 a.m. Uh, today, I actually uploaded the image, the guide image for this. So you can see my little snapshot up on my LinkedIn account. And the link is in the description uh, below the video down there. So if you click below, you can get the image loaded into Cinema 4D. And then you can work along with me. I'll try to improve that system and actually save this C4D R25 scene with the guide all lined up. You know, like I have it centered right now, like this. So as I get going, I'll try to put that up there too. Okay, today, this is a special request from Fearless Hyena. Um, just to see a mushroom be made. They also wanted the mush to see the mushroom in some uh, ground. We'll see about the ground part. Um, I'm going to start off with the mushroom. So here we go. I've got the guide kind of put in there. I picked this mushroom here. kind of looked like the average between them all to me. So what I do is I've got a cube here I made. I'm going to make a subdivision surface. Drop that cube as a child. And then make the subdivision surface see-through. By going, uh, just clicking on it and going down to the attribute manager. And then it's got these three different tabs here. On the basic one, you just select X-ray like that. Now this is a still a platonic primitive. So I've got these, you know, settings here in the attribute manager that I can change like the height, the width and the depth. But, um, once I start to 3d model the stem down there, I'm going to current state it to an object. The reason why you current state it to an object is because, you know, right now I've got six, a six sided cube, but the end thing is going to be a little bit more like a cylinder. Um, you know, I could have made it with a cylinder and then just sort of adjusted each ring as it goes up. But this is the way it came to me right away. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit. Current state to an object down here. Just this one little button there. Looks like kind of a, a hex with a pencil in it. That gives you the ability to see the points. Well, once you put the point cloud on, now you can access these points here. So eight points and we got six sides. But now I'm going to select the bottom face like this hit the hotkey d and that turns it into this mode over here it's called extrude mode now all i have to do here is just left click and drag and now instead of you know those six faces it's added four more you know so we've got 10 10 faces i don't really keep track of it but that's kind of what's going on you're adding more and more points you're getting more and more detail so then you go like this now the tool's still active so i let one go right there i've got my hand off it and it placed that polygon. Now, if I just click anywhere and uh, left click here and just drag again, it's gonna add another ring, another row of polygons like that. It's still a closed watertight tube. Or like this, then we'll do that, you know, a couple more times. Boom, like that. Now, the mushroom looks like it gets a little smaller as it goes up. So I'm just gonna go and uh, going into point mode up there. And then I'm going to my selector. So now I'm selecting things like this. And I can select, I can select all this and I could scale it down, but not have it scale down in the height just by turning off Y. See how it has a little green line and this has a green color. So if I disengage this, when I'm left clicking and dragging, it's only going to affect X and Z, which is the width and the depth. So here we go. Go into my, oh, you got to do it again. It's, it's separate for translator tool and selector tool and all that. So here I'm in scale, do it again, turn that off. Boom, like that. So the whole thing is getting smaller around. Now, let's see. I can go in here and just kind of follow the guide too. But I'll make the top two a little bit smaller. Scale those down too. Something like that might work. And let's see. Now I'm just going to move them over a little bit. Like this. I only have this one guide. So if I had another guide, it'd be better because I could I could see it from the profile and the front. But I think this should be close enough for government work. Now let's see. So there's a little bit right there. So I'm just looking at that and I'm saying, okay, I'll pull that out a little bit. Matching the photograph. Like that. And that seems pretty good. Okay, now I've got this big surface right here, which 
The first thing that occurs to me is I'm going to make a uh, a spline. You can do it <clears throat> several different ways, like a cylinder. You can do it with a cube, but you can also do it like this, where you just trace the edge of it. I'm, I'm shooting to 3D model the red part right there. For starters, like that. I might have it just kind of go. I know it's, there's going to be like a lot of lines under there. I don't really have a reference from this image. But I put this little lip up there. And then when I put the lines in, that'll kind of hide it. It won't have that um, edge to it. It'll be sort of hidden. You just sort of see this bump down here. So now make sure that this is a B-spline right there, right in the attribute manager. And then um, go to the lathe tool. It's going to revolve around that Y right there. Just zip around in a circle. So I'll drop it in like this, and you're going to get that. Now it looks like the whole thing wants to move over ever so slightly. I think what I'll do is just because there's an advantage to keeping your object in the center while you're working is I'll just shift the guide over. So go to my configure tab that was up under view configure. And then down over here, it gets the back tab selected like this. And then you can just move it over right here. Like that. Boom, like that. So now that I have better center, I can take the points there and make them a little bit bigger. So let's grab these like this. Zoom in a little bit like that. Maybe it goes down a little bit more. It seems decent. There's a little bit of like of a waver right here that I don't really have. Mine's kind of like perfect right there. So I got to keep that in mind. I might want to like add that in later. Now, if I look at this, it's a little bit over the center point. So I'm just going to scoot that back like that. If I type in, in the coordinate manager down here, zero, it'll pop to the zero. That's the advantage to working in the center. So you can do things like that. If I'm off axes, it's going to be a lot harder. All right, let's see. Now there's this little skirt thing that goes around it like this. All right. So let me see. I'm thinking like that I would make that. Hmm. The first thing I thought of was just to do something like this, where I made a made a little spline that went around it like this. But didn't quite go all the way like that because it looks like it kind of comes up here. Change that to a B spline, and then grab those points. Bring them kind of down. Let's see, where are they? Bring them down. Maybe about there, maybe. So they're like at the top of that. Then copy this, paste it, bring it down to like here. Let's start to move the points. Whoops. Let's see if maybe if I can just rotate it like that. Make it a little bigger. Move it over here like this. I'm going to copy that again, paste it, and I'm just going to bring it down here. Let's scale it up a little. Like that. Then you can take this tool right here. It's called the loft tool. And it does matter what order those are in. They kind of need to be in that order that, that they're stacked in because it's going to skin them from one to the next. So the order matters. I've got them in a, the correct order. Drop them in here. And then you're going to see the object. Like that. Now, so I want to kind of match this a little bit. So what I can do is take these. I'm going to turn this whole thing, rather than this lofted um, three splines, I'm going to turn it into a polygon object so I can pull these points down and match that curve right there. But if I do it the way it is right now, it's going to be pretty high poly. Like if I go like this, I've got a lot of points to contend with as I try to make this move down here. You can do it. You can turn on the soft selector. And you can do it in one move. But you can also go in here like this, and you can just turn this to linear. 
that reduces those points. And then you go up here to this one and you've got 16. That's going to be going around. You kind of look at the point count you have here. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so if you want to bring it down, just put this to eight. Then it's going to subdivide it eight times around, like as many points as there are. So I go like this and hit current state to an object. Now I got a lot going up. That was because I didn't adjust this one here from four. Just put that to zero. I went automatically to two, but boom, there we go. So that's the low poly conversion of that thing. Like this. You get it right back up to <clears throat> a high poly look just by dropping it underneath the subdivision like that. So then I can grab these points here. Maybe turn the soft select around a little bit. It'll give you a preview and that says I'm going to affect things this far away. Kind of like gravity. <clears throat> so I'll take this and just turn it down. Oops, maybe something like that. Turn it out to be one. So I'm going to go to two. Uh, maybe we'll go 1.5. I'll do that a lot where I see something's too much. I'll just go and like incrementally down from what it was between 1 and 5. And then just see how I feel about that. So that looks pretty cool. I'm going to move this down. Now is it getting both sides? Yep, it's getting both sides. I'll move this down here. Boom. Take this. Like so. What have I got? These are like a little different. Okay. So that looks pretty cool. Now um, I'll show you a little trick here. I kind of want to go back and get one of these splines back that I had around there. But before I do that, I'll just save the scene real quick. It's always good to keep saving your scene. Um, if the computer crashes, you're going to get it back to your last save. There is a way, actually, sometimes when it crashes that it'll try to report back the crash. And you can kind of, you can go into um, your preferences. And then you can go into this folder down here, right here. And in there, there'll be a file, a bug report right here. And in that bug report, if you undo that zip, sometimes you'll get your Cinema 4D scene back. Sometimes, but I, it, it, I've gotten it back three out of 10 times. So most of the time you go, it's gone. But sometimes if it's a really big deal, it's worth looking in there. All right. So, um, yeah, but I just saved the scene. Now I'm going to show you this trick where I'm going to kind of like time travel. So I take this and I cut it into the clipboard. So I want to bring that back in time with me because I'm going to go back in time so I can get that spline. So then what I do is I hit undo. Now in the clipboard up there, it never undoes. So I've always got this in my uh, time machine. So I'm going back like this. And boom, there it is. So I'm going to extract that spline I wanted, kind of like from the past. And then paste back in the future. And now we're back into this new future. All right, so now down here, we got this and this. Boom. B spine. So it doesn't look exactly perfect because I moved that bottom piece, but I'll just quickly move this like this. And that. Uh, 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 uh. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you know what? When I do my little trick here, it might be close enough and I could just sort of finesse it as I go. Because what I'm going to do is take these little pieces here that are going around. I'll 3D model one of them real quick. Um, putting everything underneath and all to hide it so I can just clean off the, the scene so I can work fresh. And I'm going to grab this guy here. Kind of zone him. It kind of looks like a piece of rice with some stuff going up here. So let's see, I think if I could 3D model that, we, what we could do is um, maybe just make a spline like this and just go like that. And then um, make this B spline. Then we'll grab a rectangle. Then I'll do one of these sweeps like that. Make the rectangle smaller. Let's see. 
Okay. So then I'm just going to select these guys here. I'm going to turn off that soft selector. I don't really need it right now. And scale them up. All right, doesn't really want to scale for me. So let's uh, go like this. Make them a little bit wider. And I'm just going to go in here and manually pull them up. Like that. Just kind of like going back and forth there, fattening that up there in the bottom. That looks kind of cool to me. There's a little bit of stuff right here. Um, sometimes if you want to just get some fill, you want to get like a little abstract kind of fill there, but then turn it into 3D, go on down in here into your sketch mode like this and just kind of sketch these little shapes like this. Hit escape like that, and then go up to a, a volume tool right here, like this, like this, drop it in like that. And then you do a little dance here where you're gonna lower this number here. We'll just do like divide by six. And then this here, you're gonna lower the radius and change the density. I'll try 0 0.01, 0 if you change the density to 0.5, then you might be able to get your radius smaller. Let's see. 0.1. Oh, that's probably worse. 1.0. Now, try to divide this maybe by 2. It's a little bit too much. Maybe my density can become greater. Then you might have to subdivide your voxel size. Whoops. Divide by 4. So that's, that's what I meant here about the little dance. Let's see. Times 0.6. No. Oops. Oh, shoot. Where'd I go? So I could just say times 0.7. Hmm. Well, usually this will work for me a little bit faster, but yeah. Let me see, maybe if I just start over real quick. Pop in this. Boom, boom, boom. I want to make this smaller first. Let's see, 0.4, so I'm going to go to 0.2. And that seems to blow it out right away. So if I make this more dense, right? 0.5, 1 point hmm. no. Well, let's see, since that's kind of failing for me, Pilot error, total total pilot error right there. I'll just take a similar trick that I did with this one here. I'll make it that way. So I'm going to my sweep tool, grabbing a square, dropping them down as children like that. Make that sweep linear and then make the rectangle smaller because it's huge right now. Whoops. I want to be in scale mode. Boom. And then this, boom. And I'll just current state that to an object right there. Boink. Take a look at it. Okay. Got some funky stuff going on right there. But let's see what happens if I throw it underneath the subdivision surface. Boom. I got a little something in there. I'll put this down there too. Make them children. So now we've got them both there. Now, what I might do with this one is just turn the subdivision down a little bit. Like that. Okay, so. Then I'll take this guy here. Put on my soft selector, like right there. Grab some points. Turn it down to a little bit less. And just kind of try to match this a little bit more. Turn it down even more. It's at 0.5. I'm going to go down to 0.2. Seems pretty cool. 
All right. So that's kind of close enough here. Um, let's see, look at the guide real quick. Yeah, that seems all right. And if I see these here, and I and I sometimes I want to make them like a little bit bigger. Turn that soft selector off. Where are you? You hit that little cross tool over there, it'll kind of get this window to come up in the attribute manager where you can turn off the soft selector. At least that's how I do it. So that trick was you select all the faces like that. And then if I go to normal scale, do 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 normal scale. Oh, wait, let's see. Move normal scale like this. You can kind of get it to go fatter like that. Fill it in a little bit more. All right. No. Now what I'll do is I'm going to drop a null in, create null. I'm going to position it right here. And this is so that when I'm going to when I'm going to go have this in a cloner and it's going to zip around that line, it'll be thinking of this as its axes. So I think that that's pretty cool. Let's try that. Maybe I want to rotate it a little bit like this. Let's see. Let's just kind of go along with that. Now, if I'm going to grab my uh, cloner, I'm going to want to zero my, oh, let's see, I want to take my cloner like this. Then I want to grab that spline down there. Boom. So the cloner will have this object right there. Now, it's important to kind of zero the cloner out and have it in the same location. So, because usually the way it works is you, Create the cloner, it's in the zero, zero. You create your object in the zero, zero. So it likes to have them close together. If you offset them, it, it takes that into consideration and in how it's cloning everything. So you got to watch out. So that's why I'm zeroing this out. Rotation included. And then I'll bring that back up, make it apparent. Boom. And then now, instead of saying the mode is grid or object, I'll go down to object right there. And then that gives me the ability to drag and drop another object in and have the cloner interact with that. So let's see if it worked. Um, doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Maybe because I don't have it in there. There we go. Got to put it as a child. Boom. Drop that underneath the cloner. Now we're going to see it populate. It kind of defaults to this look, which is a little uneven. I, I believe it's going by maybe where the points are or something like that. But you can go in here to the cloner and you can call this even. Um, but who knows? In the case of this mushroom here, this stuff seems kind of like ones here or the summer cluster over here. And that's kind of like what this sort of looks like. So what I could do is sort of leave it at that and just work on getting it to re be rotated correctly. So I'm going to do that. Just for the sake of time so that I can kind of move forward and get on to some other stuff. So I'll go into my cloner and you can adjust the way these things um, are rotated right here. And oftentimes I'll just punch in 90 and I'll do this process of putting it in, hitting undo until I start to kind of get a feel for how it's going. And then um, something like that, but then maybe I could try negative 90 right here. And then I've got something I think I'm like a live with right there like that. And you can do things like add variation. So like if you were to go in here and click on this cloner, you can go up to the MoGraph effector and add uh, randomness. The randomness right away applies to position, but you can turn that off right here. Boom, that snaps back on. And then you can turn on rotation like that. And then you could put in little values that might give it a like a variation let's say if i put like 30 percent in right here and i put like 12 there maybe what do i if i put 33 then it gets a little bit random like that just some randomness to how they're rotated and let's see what it looks like with the whole thing together here looks pretty cool now right away i kind of see this i want some thickness so I'll use that trick there that i learned from uh tomas marinello where i Add a cloth surface like this. Double click it. I should command C to get that little thing up. Anything you type in here, like cube, double click it, you're going to get a cube. And that you can do anything in the all of Cinema 4D. So that cube, usually you go here to get it. 
or you go up here to create, you know, primitive cube. But you can get any one of these menus, you can just go Command C, just type in what you're thinking, and then that little thing comes there. So that's pretty pretty cool way to do it. And I do it like that for this one because I can't find where the cloth surface is in the new cinema. So I just kind of defaulted to that. So here's a cloth surface. Grab this guy. I'm gonna make this uh, parent child hierarchy like this. So the 3D object's a child of the cloth surface. Cloth surface doesn't need subdivision really because I've got it going on here with this subdivision surface. So I put that to zero. And then the thickness is when I start to see what I'm looking for. So that's too thick. I can go negative 0.2 and I'll go inward. Or I could go 0.1. And then it's going out like that. That seems maybe like 0.5 to make it a little thinner looking. 0.05. Yeah. That'll work. Okay. Now let's see here. Got a little kind of fluffy stuff right there. Um, so we're gonna try to make that. You know, one way to do it would be you could go into your sketch tool, and you could just sketch lines out like this. I'm kind of mixing these two right here. I'm not sure how how wavy I really need to get with it, but like that. Okay, now I think I don't think that that will loft. Let me just double check in case I'm wrong. Uh, I'll grab a loft real quick and throw that in there. Yeah, so that's not doing anything right there. And I think it actually will take me longer to separate it, delete the, 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 than if I just do it again. So remember, when you're doing that, draw your first line. This is the mistake I made. So you draw your first line here, and then click here in the gray. Then the spline isn't orange anymore. When you draw another one, it's a brand new one. And, and that's how we need to do it to get the loft to work. So let's see. So I'm just clicking over here and then draw these out. I'm gonna have to go in and move them in 3D so that they're following. I'll just put this up here. Now we try that loft tool like this. Boink, boom, boom. And we're gonna see the structure there. So then if I go grab all these points like this, I could start to kind of line them up with this guy right here. Sometimes if you know you're gonna do them all, you kinda of go like this. Deselect like that. We'll get the next row, deselect. I'm just gonna keep making your way like that. Boom. that little wavy thing there same I'm gonna take this thing down to linear turn this stuff down uh, let's see here how many of these we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve should we may want this but doing this to two should effectively make twelve right there so I think we'll be okay with that but now from here to here let's see what happens if I turn this down not too much. Okay, so I'll just go like that. Boom. Current state to object. Is that what I want? Mm. I think that'll work. Alright. 
Then I'll throw this underneath a symmetry, like so. Boom. That's going to pop it over to the other side as long as I put in the right mirror plane, like that. I give it a little thickness. I could copy this guy here. Do, 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 do. Where is he? That cloth thing. And just delete that. Drop that in there. Maybe a little less. 101. Okay. Now what I'm going to look at is the, all those little white dots that are on the top there. So I'm going to grab a cloner. Well, the first thing I've got to do is kind of take a look at it and then see what do they look like in 3D model one of them. So it looks like a bunch of little, like a meteorite or something all stuck together. They're all kind of random. Hmm. Well, let's see. What I could do is... I'm going to make a little thing that makes these. So if I make a, a cloner, and then if I make a, a cube and put the cube in there. Now, I'm just going to hide that real quick. And I'm going to make this another cube real quick like this and just sort of um, make a blobular shape that's kind of like that, I think. Is that what I want to do? Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to copy this cube, scale it down. Okay, I'm going to go here. Now make sure the subdivisions are at here. I'm just going to go 2, 2, 2. And then current state to an object. Now I should have some points in there to play with now right there, okay. And then, you know what, let's do 3, 3, 3. And I'll do that again. Boom, now I've got more points to play with. And I'll drop that underneath the hypernerb, or subdivision surface. Go into point mode and start to stretch these out. Now this is only gonna really do it from this angle. So I gotta be aware of that. And then just sort of look at it in 3D and then just make sure it doesn't look too cuby from different angles when I'm done with it. Okay. It's pretty much matching that outline right there. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I'm gonna look at it in 3D and see how it's kind of like a tooth there like that. So just select these, scale them out. <laughs> Maybe select it all and hit iron. Move iron. Like that. And scale it up a little. Then move these things around again a little bit. Whoops. There you go. Hit the space bar. You can kind of like hot fire back and forth. So there's this random blob thing. Now let's see. If I just make a couple of a couple of these. Um, just taking a look at this cloner here. Get rid of that. I don't think I need it anymore. Now if I copy that and make this group it. And then sort of start moving this around. Maybe I'll just randomly rotate it. And then I'm going to turn on that soft selector. Maybe turn it up a little, 0.5. It's kind of like blah. 
block that out. Turn it down to point one. Start pulling some things like that a little bit better. Oh, I'll grab another one. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I'll just bring that back. So I'm just grabbing a few of these here. Using this the guides in the background there to to get some variation going. Because we're gonna take these different little shapes and clone them around that top of the mushroom. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna turn off the soft selector. This thing's got this little point here. Just gonna iron that a little bit. Move iron. Now, if I take all of these, you can keep going with that if you want to make like 10, 20 of them. You can just keep going. Um, but I've got three. And I'll take these guys up here, select all the points like that, and zero them out. Same thing. Select all the points. Zero it out. Brings it back to the origin of the scene. See the blue and the things intersecting there, those two lines? That's the origin. This one is pretty close. Seems weird right here. It doesn't go down to zero, though. So it's just what I'm thinking. I'm surprised it's not down here. But. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I'm not sure why that's not dropping down there when I'm hitting zero on the Y all the way down to here. But I'm going to do it again. Just, just lower that down there like that. Now you want to make sure that the axes of these guys are in the right spot. So you go into object mode. And the axes. Now all these axes here want to be at zero. So just double check that real quick. Like so. Alright. Now I've got all the axes there at zero. Okay. Now what you can do is create a cloner. Like this. Drop all of them underneath the cloner like that. And I'll just turn the cloner off for now. And then I'm going to grab this mushroom top that I made. Whoops. That was the other thing. Grab this. And then that's a copy. So I've got the other one in there. Now I can. I don't need this to go around the bottom. So I can take these points here that are down here. And I can kind of get rid of them, I think, and just go up to here. So I'm going like this. Go into point mode. Just cut these ones off like that. Maybe even cut this one off. Now, this is not necessarily guaranteed to work. You see how they get all tight at the top like that? So I'll figure this out. I might end up having to do rings, and that's my backup plan. But let's see if I can do it just with this for starters. So I've got this like that. Now, you can drag and drop this object into the cloner like this. Just turn it from um, this grid setting to object. Drag and drop that in there. And they start to populate like that. Now, to get them to go around those rings, let's see. I'm not quite sure, but um, you can tell it to have a different um, method. So right now it's on surface. So you can change this to vertex, for example. And that pops in a whole heck of a lot. Um, you can change it to edge. And polygon center. And now this will be affected if you change these two. So see this is on B spline. That adds a lot more splines to make the curve. You put on linear, it changes it. So you're going to get a lot less like that. Um, you want to get back the smoothness. Just drop all this underneath a subdivision surface like this. Okay, so we're starting to see something here. 
Let me take a look at it. I like to just group things in a null and just turn them off like that. And look at the underline then and look at them. So, you know, it doesn't look too far off, I guess. But I think one way that I could do and have a little more control that I can think of right away would be rather than using this object right here, the lathe object like that. Um, I could just use circles. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to go grab a circle like this. Boom. Rotate it. Like that. And then in the cloner, I'm going to put the circle in for the object. So object, drop the circle in like this. Boom. And I kind of have something here that I can kind of look at. And I see how many I've got. It's got the variation of the different three happening. And then I can change the size of the circle like this. And I can start to get it to intersect with that little mushroom shape down there and move it up. Now, um, I'm just thinking of, if I want to look at the reference here real quick, just to shut this off. And then kind of get a feel for it. So the ones that are down here are a little bit smaller. So right away, just to do that really quick, I can go into these guys here and I can just scale them all down. Now they look like they're over there, but they're really at the origin when I, when I scale them, I believe. So they all scale from the center point. And I can get them down pretty small. So those ones are all really kind of teeny down there, like that. Then what I can do is I can crank it up. So I've got just a few going around like that. So let's see how they're distributed. I go in here. I have a count going. So let's see. I think I can do even. Um, and then let's crank this up. So probably want to go to like 500. Uh, is that about right? Oh, there's a lot of them. But let's try 300 for starters. But what I can do now is so they're all on top of each other, but I can go in here. If I have the cloner selected, go back and, and um, click that random tool again, effector random. It changes the position quite a bit, which is actually pretty cool for, for what I want to do, but I don't want it to move that much. So I can go in here and just lower those numbers. So the parameters, they're all at 1.6. Drop them all down to, say, 0.1 for starters. Like that. Now you go in here, you start to decide, okay, just on why I want it to go up and down a little more, so 0.2. And then maybe I want a, ver a variety of scale that I'm not quite seeing. So I want some to be bigger, some to be smaller. So I go in here to the parameter of scale and turn it on. And then I could do, let's say, uniform scale, I think is... Uh, Good. Now maybe I scale it to be two times bigger. One. One looked pretty good. Like that. We can bring our mushroom back in real quick and look at it. And see, because some of these some of these will might, you know, should be like hidden. That's where my, my point one might need to be lower. You see how these are sort of floating around. So I might want to do this to be 0 0.05. 0 0.05. And then I can move the circle, so maybe I want to move the circle up a little, like that. And I can also scale the circle. I might lose a couple, gain a couple, but overall, to get the effect that I'm going for, it might work out pretty good. All right, so then take this whole setup right here. So I've got, these are the objects, this is the circle, this is the randomizer. Take that whole thing, put it underneath a null, like that. Copy and paste it. Now we've got another set. So and then I can take this ring and move it up. Maybe hide everything so I can see what I'm doing on the second ring. Bring it up to maybe about right. Oops, let's see. I don't have the ring selected. Bring it up to about here. We have way too many and they're way too small. So for the way too many part, go in here, turn it down to 100. For the too small part, you know, I have that scale thing going, so I could just try that. Uh, right now it's set to one, maybe I go to three. You get a lot of little teeny ones when you do that. So why don't we go to one, go down, grab the source, guys. It's different than the other ones. The other ones are down here, so those won't be affected. And then go to point mode. You don't have to go to point mode, but I'm going to go to point mode. Select them all, hit the scale tool, 
and then make them bigger. That's what that looks like. It's decent, but maybe like too many of them. Maybe too much variety of scale. Turn that 0.5, uh, maybe 0.3. Point four looks like there's too many of them. Some of them also look like they want to be a lot bigger, so I can just take one and make it bigger. Whoops. It's just a little bit too. It looks a little awkward. Go with that. I'm gonna turn the number down. I've got uh, like a hundred right now. So let's go down to something that looks a little bit more like the guide. You're seeing through it too, which is a little tricky. Some somewhere in there, maybe make these guys a little bit bigger. Let's look at it on the mushroom. Okay, some of them are going to get hidden, so you might want to hit the scale button here. You know, it's okay to have some of them hidden, but like that. Pretty good to me. So I'm going to duplicate that, copy, paste. I'll drag that, drop it underneath the um, the main null. And just hide that. Now my copy here. Go ahead and bring it up to the next row. It's going to get smaller. I'm in uh, point mode. Scale. Scale them down. My bad, what happened here? Got the wrong ones. Hold up. Here they are. So we're going to scale them down. Then I've also got to scale this down. Like so. Now I'm just going to grab both of these, these these two, this ring and this ring. Copy, paste, bring it up, scale it down. Just going back here to my guide and I got like up to there maybe. Spin these around. I'm just going to keep doing the same thing here. I'm copying and pasting this. Copy, paste, zip it around. Okay, keep on going. You could totally put this underneath a cloner and, and, and kind of do this with a cloner too. So let's say like if I wanted to not have to keep manually copying, pasting, even though it's kind of fun to kind of go in here and put my own random twist on things. 
But um, you could also go like this. You could take a cloner, zero it out under that last one up there at the top. So you do that down here in your coordinate manager. See that right there? These two numbers are off. Zero that out. Zero that out. Now this is in the exact same location in space. Boom. Which is important when you're doing a cloner. So I hit the cloner like this. Boom. Change that cloner to linear. Now it's going to go up a certain height. And it can also get smaller. Um, somewhere in there with the scale. So how many do we want? Let's say we want 10. And how high do they go? Let's say they go 0.1. And what's this scale going to go down? Let's say it goes down 10, 10%. Oh, hmm, actually, that got bigger. Can I go negative 10? Yeah, it doesn't like the negatives. Um. Let's see. What I'm going to do here real quick is introduce a randomizer to get these spins a little different, I think. So I'm hitting that cloner right there. That's the one that was going up. And in the end, I'll just scale this down. That's how I'm going to get myself out of the pickle. So go like this and then go up to MoGraph randomizer. What do I want to randomize? The position, no. I want to randomize the rotation. And which one? Not that one. Maybe that one. Let me just double check. Yeah, it was definitely that one. So let's see, 180. Boom. Bunch of variation in there. Now, take this cloner and just scale it down. Okay, so you see the height's not perfect because my top one's going in, but that one's not perfect. So you adjust that right here, right there, and it's that height one. So the height is too too big. You can also just grab this guy, I think, and go. Well, it's not so easy right there, but you can hone in on here now. You could do things like divide by two. Well, now that made it bigger. So undo that times two. That's more what I was looking for. And maybe I drop it down a little. Maybe. You know what? What's my randomizer? Is it position? No, it's not doing that. Hmm. So maybe it's just. It should be that when you hit divide, but I guess it's got some negative thing going on. So I'm going to do times two. All right, so it's gonna it's gonna a little bit tricky to like get get that exactly in. So what I could do is just hit this current state to an object, then it makes each one of these rings a separate little null here. So if I do fold all, it'll fold everything in the scene. I can just kind of get at them like this, and like a kind of onesie twosie, pop that like that. This one looks, seems to have nothing in it. Uh, let's scale it up a little. Okay, there's a couple more of these, a few more of these to go. I just want to make sure that they're on the surface and not floating. Too bad. Oh, there she blows. Okay, so let me see here. Da, 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 da. Like the current state, these all to an object, um, but I have a subdivision surface on a bunch of them. So I'll show you this little trick I can do. If I go up here in the search engine, type in sub, 
There's every subdivision in the scene. Turn them all off. And then go back in here and I grab all the stuff that I want to grab. And where, where I want to go with that was current stating it all to an object. Well, there's a couple more in there. Let's just grab all these. Select the children. Connect objects and delete. I would just have all these in a in their own little point cloud right here. Pop on a smooth like that. There we go. Now all those other subdivision surfaces, I can turn them back on like that. But I didn't want to have that current state to an object, so then I just want to be able to have that ability to turn that on and off like that. Alrighty. Let's see. This little guy is ready, I think, for some texturing. So I'm just going to look at the reference down here. So these guys are kind of this yellowish, whitish stuff, same as these, like a pollen -y thing. So let me grab that. Let's double click in there to make a new material. And then I'm going to grab that yellowish color down here. Maybe pump it up a little bit. Drag and drop down on those. And on all these. All right. They kind of almost look like they're sort of almost white here on some of them. It might be kind of cool to do like a gradient that went from that yellow. If I copy that. Paste it like this. Grab the yellow again. To the white like that. So that's what I was thinking. Then a little variation in there. And then sort of a white color down here. Don't think that wants the blue in there really. Like that. Drop it on that. And on that. Little spacing issue over here. So you see the space space thing here. One way to fix that real quick would be take this guy here, turn off the cloth, turn off that. Oops. Get down to the object, right? And I'm gonna look at it from the top view. I'll hide everything in here but this while I'm working on it. So. I want to look at it from the top view and make sure there's a point somewhere in the middle. So I've got these like this. I could use that. It looks like it wants to be this one, actually. Let's go like that. I want to make sure that Z is zero um, in the scale. Like that. I'll take all this right here and just delete it. Grab a symmetry tool right here and drag and drop that under it. Pick the right plane. There we go. Turn all that back on. Turn this back on. And that should have fixed that. There we go. Well, did it? Not really. Well, let's see though. Now that now I can go fix the one side. And should fix them both. I don't really seem to like that. You know what I did is I deleted the wrong side. So let me do that one more time. Deleted the good side. So same thing, except delete this side. Put 
Grab a symmetry tool again. Drag that down there. Boom. Make sure you get the plane correct that the symmetry tool is working on. Like that. Turn all these back on. Now when I'm looking at it, let's see. Lines up there. Lines up there better. Okay. All right. So then I just need to get this texture here because I go from red to like orange. So what we do here, we're going to go to a gradient. Make this vertical. And then, let's see, how does the gradient look funny? I guess I'm zoomed in, there we go. Double click this, sample up here, this really dark red. Seems like it's darker than that. And then down here, I'm gonna sample this orangey. It's funny, you'll sometimes you sample these and they don't really look like they do to your eye. So I'll, sometimes I'll just push them more and saturate it like they're kind of fake it. So then I'll drag and drop that on there. And then I just want to make sure that it's going right. See here, it's kind of weird. That's going to be the UV default. But I could do um, a flat from the side. And it's going to like machine gun through and make everything the same color, so it should work pretty good. So I'll go here, go like this, click on flat, go to fit to region, and then just trace around the size of this thing. One more time, trace, fit to region. Hmm. Let's see, why are you not liking that? We're on flat, tag, fit to region, and there we go. Okay. Now, if you go in there, you can see that it's kind of even. Well, I might want a little more red right down to here. So I'm going to push that like this. And then I can even get more orange in the bottom like that. Looks pretty cool. They look like they're pretty reflective right there, pretty shiny. Uh, so I'm going to go in and make that shiny. Let's see. Reflectance. I'm going to add reflection and then turn it down alrighty that looks pretty cool to me I think let's see oh one thing I was thinking was you see here in this mushroom there's kind of like these bumps um Add under like a bump map, a noise like this. Let I get onto it. Let's see. Yeah, see that? Now, when I go down here to this object, I believe it's this one, I'll put that on uh, cubic down here on the UV map. And then do a tag fit to object like that. Then see how I'm getting those little waves right there. Um, the they look pretty cool like that actually to me. Now this guy here actually, for now when I look at it really quick, it almost looks like it's waving in and out like that, um, which I don't have too much of that action going on right here of, of this waving in and out. Also reminds me here of this piece. Um, let's throw that in real quick. So I'm just going to grab this. I don't have a reference for this, but I'm pretty sure it's there. So I'm going to scale that down and then make it big this way. Uh, let's see. We're gonna take a look at my mushroom again so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Boom, move this over here. Alrighty. So I'm gonna put this underneath the null. The null is gonna be in the center of everything there. And then I'll grab a cloner. So I'll put that underneath there, put that underneath there. I also wanted to do um, 
a little bevel on that. So I'm just going to grab a bevel, throw that in there. And then um, now if I take this and turn it to radial, I can change the radius. Boom. And then I can change how many I've got like that. I'll just load it up. And maybe I want the height to be a little bit more like higher and then lift it up. Like that. And then make that like a brown, um, earthy. If I got something down here, let's see. I'm just going to look at the reference right there. I'll grab some color like in here. Ooh, that's blue. I don't really want blue so much as I did like brown. And I don't think it needs much of this specular going on. Oh. Maybe a little bit. But I can turn it down right here. All right, that looked pretty cool. What am I thinking right now? Um... So let's see. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Let me take it in. Um, take it into a shot render for you. Um, boom, ba -dum. One thing I'm considering is the ground there. Um, that was the request from Fearless Hyena. Is also to have the ground in there. And I don't have too much, um, you know. Of a ground going on if I wanted to get like a really quick thing happening here what I might be able to do is take like a plane like where are they um, is it under this one let's see I don't see it Well, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll worry about the floor, you know, trying to figure out how to make a forest floor that these are coming out of on another time. And for now, I'll just give you a quick render of this and uh, we'll call it a day. So I'm just going to go track down one of my scenes that I've got already set up that's got a uh, basically a lighting set up in it that I need. So I'm going to go in here and grab this one. The last one I made was a cannon. Get rid of that. Grab the mushroom. Copy it. Bring it in here. Into the lighting setup. I'm kind of getting like an angle I'm going for here. And then I just want to double check the render settings and make sure it's on default. Okay, that looks good. Physical. Boom. Let's do a quick render for you. It's a little blown out. Um, let's see. I'm not sure why. I was going to say it's because I've got this extra light in here and I usually shut that off. But it doesn't seem to be that. Maybe if I look at it from a different angle. Seems decent. I mean, this starts to seem a little bit, you know, kind of like right away, I think what I might be able to do that. If I wanted to connect these, if I wasn't really satisfied with the way they looked, is um, trace them down. I'm just going to drag them out of the mushroom real quick. And this guy, right there. And I could try to put them in a, a volume that might kind of like mush them together. Now, the volume tool is a little tricky. They have to be watertight objects, and you need to have a pretty good subdivision. So let's just try to see what happens here. It's doing okay in the back, but the front one's looking a little funky. It's coming in now, though. And you can kind of keep doing this until the computer tells you, hey, you're getting to crazy land. But it doesn't really mind that, and then it looks like I can put a smoother on. And let's see if I keep going here. Try to get that guy back in. You can see it's calculating down there going, oh my gosh. And 
Smooth not doing much. So I was kind of hoping it would just blur those two together and I could kind of hide that. But doesn't look like I'm getting so lucky right away. And it's taking a long time to calculate. So it's hard to kind of like experiment with it on the fly here. So. I'll just take it back to what I had it for now. We'll call this close enough for government work. Try to get one last little render here if it's not too blown out for you. All right, yeah. So if you have any um, questions or comments, please uh, post them. If you can like and subscribe, that'd be great. Working my way up to 1,000 subscribers. This was um, a request from one subscriber. So if you have an idea of a 3D model, let me know. Another subscriber asked me to put these guides up before I do the video. It took me about a week or two to actually get through that. And I'm putting them up on LinkedIn right now. It's not necessarily going to be the final place, but at least, you know, I was trying to follow up on that request there for you guys. So let me know if you have any um, comments, questions. Please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you very much.